Close your eyes and keep your mind with the breath. If it wants to leave the breath, remind it that's not where it's supposed to be right now. The breath is like your home right now. Your mind is like a home. You want to keep it like a home. And one of the important parts of having a home is that you know when to open the windows and close them, when to open the doors and close them. Because there are things inside that you don't want to have go outside, and there are things outside that you don't want to have come in. If you keep your windows and doors open all the time, it's like a bus station or a train station. Anybody can come in. Anything can go out. As we know, all kinds of strange things happen in the dark corners of the bus station. People come in from who knows where, and they establish little camps. So you don't want unskillful things coming in from outside. You have to be very careful at what you look at, what you listen to, what you, what you touch what every, with every sense. When the mind is going out, actually the mind goes out to capture things outside. And when it goes out, what's lying behind it? What's the motive force? And then when it captures something and brings it in, what does, effect does it have on the mind? You have to look at these things. You don't just go looking for things you like and letting everything that looks good come in. Because some things can look good, but they can be bad for you. So you have to ask yourself, why are you letting this in? And what are you doing? And what does it do to you when you let it in? If you look at something and it gives rise to greed, okay, you have to look at it in a different way. If it gives rise to lust or anger, you have to look at it in a different way. And you have to ask, well, maybe it was the lust and the anger that were doing the looking to begin with. So you look, have to look at the senses as processes, where a particular idea comes from, what it will lead you to do. And that's dealing with the dangers outside. Then there are dangers inside. We all have tigers inside our homes. And if our tigers get outside and they eat up the cho neighborhood children or destroy the neighborhood property, okay, we're going to be in trouble. In other words, our anger, our, our greed, our delusion, these things can go around and cause a lot of trouble. And the trouble doesn't stop outside, it comes back to us. So you have to be very careful about what you say, what you do, and what you think, and particularly what you say. It's so easy to open your mouth and just let anything come out. You have to think carefully when I speak these things, why am I speaking them? Are they true? Are they useful? And what impact are they going to have, both on me and on other people? Like right now during the retreat, there's a time to be quiet. And you learn how to appreciate the value of just keeping things to yourself. As I say, silence is golden, so if you're going to break the silence, you want to have something better than gold. If you exercise restraint this way, then your house stays safe, the neighborhood stays safe. And you don't have to put up with living in a bus station where anything can happen. You have some control about what state of mind you're going to be dwelling in and how to maintain it. And that way you benefit and the people around you benefit as well.